Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. This is 792 Ashman, and this is your second Toon Boom Studio tutorial. I'm coming to you guys live from uh, Austin, Texas, where we've had a great Thanksgiving, watched a lot of football, uh, some very crazy football games. Cowboys, they just get to you, man. They just get to you. Uh, like always, my mission statement is to help you guys learn how to animate as easy as possible. Well, easier than watching a Cowboys game. <laughs> uh, so I'm sorry that I missed last week's deadline. I was promising to do this every Saturday, but I've been very busy and complications came up. But don't worry, I'm here for you guys. And today we're going to learn the ins and outs of painting. Now, since it's Thanksgiving, I found it appropriate to create a Thanksgiving turkey. Yeah. So, uh... What we're going to do is we're going to go in and individually color in this turkey, which I've already drawn using what I showed you last week with selecting and painting. Alright, so, first off, I'm going to show you guys the color palette. This is the color palette, and TubeBib Studio comes with a large variety of colors already made on the default, 120. But, for the more artistic and more creative, I seriously suggest you create a new palette. Alright. So with this new palette, you start off with just one color, and it's the default black. What you're going to do is you're going to press plus, make a few colors, and you're going to change a few. So right here, you double click, and it brings up the color picker. All right? And the color picker gives you six different ways to come up with the color of your choice. My favorite is H, because you can go around and uh, find the color you want. And I find it the most, I would say, uh, simple perhaps uh, easiest and comfortable. So I would come in and find the color I'd like. I remember it's kind of a desaturated red that I used in Thanksgiving cartoon I made a long time ago when I was younger. Uh, and then you basically click, and that would be that. Now I find that red's a bit too dark and dull for me, so what I can do is I can adjust and play with it, and you can see over here it's being edited as I'm trying to find the right color. Alright? So which makes it pretty useful and interesting. So now, that would be simply using the paint button. Now, a few things to remember while painting. Let me go ahead and draw you guys a circle. And the circle's not completely filled in all the way. Paint gives you a little bit of leeway and grace when uh, filling in a selection that you've created with the line tool. As you can see, when there's a line that's not completely covered, if I color in, it gives you a little bit of grace which is pretty nice and useful. Now, what you need to know next, we're going to go over unpaint. Unpaint I don't use very much, but it's simply just unpaint whatever you've painted. Now, the dropper is as simple as it sounds. You just click and it'll show you the color that's there. All right, so that's the dropper. Now we're going to get into two very important tools, and this would be the close gap and stroke tool. Now let me show you what this means. I'm going to create a circle and it's going to have a modest looking gap. It's a pretty crummy circle. It could be an apple. I go to my closed gap tool. Now I'm going to connect one end of this line that I'm drawing, it's a little blue line, to that end piece of the black line there and have it run into the end piece right there. So what happens is when you come over and paint it, it creates a straight wall that locks these two endpoints together. And that's basically the closed gap tool. Now, the stroke tool, what it's going to do is, you can go and make whatever curvy shape you'd like, and have it connect the other end point, then go to your paint, and it creates whatever shape you just made. It's very important if you want to do the lineless style, so you can make whatever kind of machination of shape you'd like, then color. Now, an important hotkey to remember, and this comes as a Toon Boom default, is if you press K, it'll show you the lines that you've made. So I can come over here and create complicated lines and everything like that and never forget where they are if you have K uh, pressed and then you press K again to toggle it off. Okay, so that essentially, so that essentially low, is how you do that. Now, also I'm going to show you guys how to shade and it's two very important tools uh, are the close gap and the stroke tool. So let me explain. I can come over here, let's go ahead and press K just to get a better feel for it. I, don't forget you can rotate the camera by pressing C or V as hotkeys and then you can come over and draw using the stroke tool 
whatever type of invisible line you'd like. And then you come over, and oh, also one last thing, if you, you can use the contour tool, which I showed you last time, to straighten out lines. So this can be pretty useful if you want to smooth them out. So then what you can do is you can go to your paint, let's make a darker red, the shade color. Press K to toggle that off. I want to straighten this out. And then, bam. You also might want to zoom in a little bit, because like I said, it, it finds its own little borders. And you've basically got your shaded turkey. Uh-huh. So, that's a pretty useful tool. Now let's go ahead and just finish out this turkey for the tutorial. Use these other colors I got here. The uh, beak, I remember, was kind of a bronzish yellow. Something along these lines, and don't forget, I love that you can play along with the uh, color as you're using it. Something along these lines. Come over here. It's very simple how you do this. Let's make a white for his eyes. Oops. Make a brown for his fur. And you know, if I were trying to do this, I might be a little more detailed, and, and details is always nice. In fact, I would give shading to each of these points, but for the sake of simplicity and speeding up this tutorial, I'll spare you that. Next time we might get a little bit more fancy. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you today is the Edit Texture tool, and this gets into gradients. So let's go over to this beak, double-click on it, and you see Solid and Gradient. If you click Gradient, it brings up this little menu here. You are set up instantly with two colors that are both the exact same, but as you can see, I can come over here and make a different color. Now, the gradient allows you to play, as you can see what's going on in real time, what's going on here. And you can also set up by clicking linear or radial. This is what linear is going to look like. I mean, this is what radial is going to look like, and this is what linear is going to look like. You can basically see down here. Now, when you go over to paint, you can actually, if you hold down the paint tool, you can stretch things out and make whatever you'd like. Or, the fancier way of doing this is you can go to Edit Texture, it can get very deep in depth with this. Stretch it out, uh, you can compress it, and even rotate it. So you can get the exact kind of sheen of color that you're looking for. So that's essentially how you do coloring. There are a few other tips, but that's pretty much exactly how I do it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Next time, we're gonna get into erasing cutting and you know manipulating the scene a bit more and maybe even touch up a bit on animating, which will be our next big step. For all of you, happy Thanksgiving and good luck.